video series, we are going to take a look at a very interesting application of linear algebra known as image convolutions or simply convolutions. Now, there are lots of applications of convolutions, but we're going to study convolutions in the context of uh, processing an image. And you probably are familiar with, with image processing. Maybe there's an application that allows you to modify the way the image looks. So we'll talk a little bit about that. But first, we have to kind of understand how we can even use linear algebra in the first place. Well, it turns out that if you think of a picture, a picture, whether it be a JPG or a PNG or a GIF, whatever kind of file you have, it's a series of pixels. And each of those pixels has a value. So imagine that we have an M by N image. Okay. So that basically means we have this, we have this picture. It's going to have, it's going to have M rows and it's going to have N columns. Okay. So it doesn't have to be square. It, it, it could be a square picture, but it may be, and typically is rectangular. Now, in terms of how you represent one pixel, so if we just look at this one pixel here, let's pretend that's really blown up and large, that the, the way that we perceive the color of that one pixel is a function of what R, G, and B values that pixel has. So there are actually three matrices, as shown here, that represent the different layers of color that we have in there. And when you combine light, you really just need red, green, and blue. I'm not an, an expert at understanding colors, but in terms of light, R, G, and B, and their different shades, if you will, can create many, many different perceptions of, of color. So in this first layer, this R layer, we're going to have in this matrix some pixel value that's going to be between 0 and 255. Okay, Every single pixel value can be between 0 and 255. So maybe this pixel value is 19, and maybe this pixel value is 200, and this pixel value is 18. So now these three matrices, when we combine the shade of red, the shade of green, and the shade of blue, or the combination of R, G, and B, which would be in this case 19, 200, and 18 as an order triple, then we get a perception of color. So given that that is the case, these are numerical values, we can manipulate these values in certain strategic ways and make the image change in its appearance. That is called image processing. Okay, we are processing the image to look like something different than what the original image shows. Okay, so for simplicity, instead of having to deal with these three layers, when you actually convert an image to grayscale, so essentially black and white, you have a, a shade, from totally white to totally black, anything in between and different shades of gray, you call that a grayscale image. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to take these three matrices and compress it down into just one matrix. It just makes it a little bit easier to learn with. So we're just gonna focus on black and white images since it requires manipulating a, a single, single matrix. Okay, so when we process an image, we are in some way changing pixel values within one or more of the matrices R, G, or B. Uh, every smartphone, every device has some sort of basic image processing apps. So you, you usually can go into your device and you can change the contrast or you can sharpen the image or do what's called edge detection, embossing, filtering, uh, doing fun, funky things, making people's faces look funny. We can do all of those things as a result of different types of matrix transformations. So in the next video, we'll actually take a look at the process of manipulating an image. And it, and it amounts to creating a matrix that has strategic values in it that is then used in combination with each pixel value in our actual image and it takes into account the surrounding pixels to somehow manipulate that pixel right in the center. And that matrix that performs this operation is, is called the kernel. And when you combine the kernel with your matrix, you are performing what is called a convolution. We'll take a look at that in the next video.